to give reactive, reactive oxygen species, for example, which in turn can sort of stimulate cancer growth and so forth. And so from that point of view, as far as salt is concerned, I go back to the days when the argument about salt first arose, you know, in the in the 70s, the 1970s, in, in the uh, regulation, re regulatory community at the time. And it was a big argument about, you know, uh, the the potassium salt as opposed to sodium salt. The industry in turn was, you know, a troublesome, troubled by this kind of discussion we were having in the site and nutrition community. And, and we're saying they were kind of pushing, don't worry about the salt, really. All we need to do is to take the, you know, the, the probably the, the uh, potassium salts. Uh, and so there was a lot of discussion at the time. My my own view, and just look at the data, is that uh, yeah, we should keep that at a minimum, especially added salt. Uh, but a little salt from now and now and again to make uh, taste foods a little more tasty. Uh, you know, I I I don't see the data. I don't see the data actually in the literature. I so, know I, I agree with Dr. Esselton what he just said, and that yeah. is, that, uh, you know, when when he says what, you know, if he's too strict about it, then, uh, you know, it lets, it lets up a little bit. Everybody's going to say, Dr. Eslin says it's okay. But I'm somewhere in the sort of doubtful community, actually, in terms of absolute uh, recommendations. Thank you. Yeah, I just want to just throw out, you know, uh, and I know it's always, we, I think we had some of this discussion last year, but I just want to point it out uh, that, you know, we've had some embarrassing times in cardiology if I had to pick the, my top ones, it would be treatment of heart attack with Mona. Morphine killed people. Oxygen kills people unless you have an oxygen saturation when you're having a heart attack of less than 94. Nitrates shunt blood away from the heart attack. And aspirin, we always had the wrong dose, and it's not nearly as good as the P2Y12 inhibitors in terms of lowering events and uh, avoiding bleeding. So we had to keep, we have to constantly keep our eyes on randomized trials, large observational trials. Uh, did I not mention HDL where everybody, we were doing all these trials to improve HDL? Every one of them showed a slight increase in mortality, because even though that was the good cholesterol. So finally we have CanHeart, a couple of trials that show unequivocally that a high HDL increases your mortality. So why am I saying all this? Because I've learned as a cardiologist over 46 years of academic cardiology to be really humble uh, and expect ha almost everything I learned back in the 80s was wrong. And everything I'm learning, if I haven't learned it in the last 18 months, I try not to quote it because you don't know. So anyway, um, the point I'm making is that I put in the chat two studies that you might want to look at. One is a review of saturated fat showing a dramatic increase in mortality compared to polyunsaturated and monounsaturated fat. Uh, you can click on that one. Uh, that's uh, a review from the Harvard School of Public Health. Uh, and the other one was actually... Uh, a large 30-year outcome for avocado increase. The, the mortality ratio was, uh, uh, hazard ratio was 0.84, so a 16% decrease. Uh, so, so why, the, you know, and when you're saying, uh, Dr. Elson, too much saturated fat, it has three grams of saturated fat. That's pretty much where I draw the line because the data shows that once you get above 10% um, of your calories, uh, as saturated fat, that's when the LDL and the mortality start to take off. And so with that being the standard, you can do a little bit of it, but I try, you know, I'm, maybe I should eat that curry, not zero, but once a month, but I really don't want the saturated fat um, uh, routinely unless I have a randomized trial that that particular food is going to lower my mortality. In this case, the avocados, it is true. I just want to reinforce what uh, Kim has just said about HDL being uh, injurious. And it was, uh, I believe it was in, uh, I can't give you the date actually, but no. the group from the West Coast from UCLA uh, did a study of Two. the apple a, me, but what we protein moiety section of the HDL cholesterol. And they found our first is the HDL three. cholesterol was exposed to the Western diet. It injured and destroyed the apple A1, which is so important. And as a result, it converted your HDL molecule from normally when it's produced an anti-inflammatory molecule. Once it's been exposed to the Western diet, it now becomes a pro-inflammatory molecule working with your LDL to injure you. My, uh, the, I think the highest H, uh, HDL I've seen in a patient with a heart attack was a woman who had an HDL of 120. 
she survived the heart attack and we've been following her now for over 15 years and she continues to do beautifully but the lowest that i can get her h or the lowest that i can get her hdl is to uh, 80. thank you um dr esselstein you have in the past uh touted the benefits of nitric oxide i believe yes. from from green leafy vegetables now there was there's been a we had a dentist on who said that she's seen oxalates from green vegetables negatively impacting teeth and bones. Um, so should we be trying to eat as much green vegetables as we can? Is oxalate something that concerns you? I've not seen this uh, hazard that you just mentioned in, in 39 years of uh, in being in this business. So I'll wait to see more hard, hard data from that one. Okay. Dr. Williams, how about you? Did you, does green ve leafy vegetables as much as we can have seem like a good suggestion or is there some reason to be concerned about oxalates? I, so I really don't think as long as you're taking uh, oxalate, oxalic acids, renal stones do occur. And if people are eating a lot of green vegetables and not drinking water at, at an adequate amount, you probably are putting yourself at risk. Uh, so I would say just adequately hydrate and you should be fine. If you're exercising every day, um, making sure that you are uh, hydrating well, it should be no problem. Thank you. Um, so <clears throat> when people listen to the three of you, um, there's a lot of confidence we have. We're very um, encouraged and we feel like we're getting a very clear understanding of what direction to go in. And we're going to go downstairs and we're going to go speak to our family. We're going to go out to the world and we take a drive to Barnes and Noble and there in the health section and there in the New York Times bestseller list are a tremendous, all the time, year after year, a nonstop someone coming out with a book saying a keto, a paleo, a Western price, a low carb diet has been proven to be better. And somehow they get a lot of attention and they make a case of why um, their diet with, you know, with animal products and is, is a good diet. Um, I don't know what, what these people, a lot of them are, seem smart. They're credentialed. Why is there people that say this? And what is your response to all the people that keep writing books and touting the benefits of these low carb diets? So if I can start with that one, uh, you might remember about two years ago, two and a half years ago, there was a big push uh, in one of our major journals about the benefits of red meat. And uh, it ended up being debunked because there was a uh, Cattlemen's Association type of industry behind uh, those particular authors. Uh, I could say that the pandemic kind of slowed down. It didn't eliminate, but it slowed down our... Um, uh, veto vegan slash keto wars uh, because of the 56% increase in moderate to severe uh, COVID illness if you were doing a keto diet and a 73% decrease in moderate to severe COVID if you were doing a, a whole food plant-based diet. And so I, I would hope that at this point, uh, despite the fact that your diabetes will get better because you lose some weight and your insulin levels will drop and your blood pressure will go down because of the same reason. You get the, uh, other than that, you're increasing your LDL cholesterol, you're increasing your infl inflammation. And uh, the Sarah Seidelman article says that you will increase your mortality by at least 30%.